Hello and welcome to a new video about chromatic controls. We are still dealing with signal overlapping. Last time we made some sort of solution to our issue. We said, yeah, we are using roller lever valves with idle return and so we can switch off the signal and only trigger. Because we are using impulse valves, this is okay. However, we also realized the end position cannot be covered by this. Yeah, so we need to position this idle return roller lever valves uh, in a way that at the end they will not be operated. So we are not 100% certain if everything is going as smooth as we think. Today I want to show you a different approach. Okay? It's a cascaded control. So it's a control which is dividing the task into subtasks. If we go into extremes and every step is a subtask, then we are talking about synchronized chain. This is a little bit less than a synchronized chain, that's this cascaded control. How we are doing this? The task is still the same. Okay, we have two cylinders, MM1 and MM2, and they shall move in this pattern. Yeah? The goal or the, the situation in cascaded control is that we do subdivide this control into parts where all situations are unique. Yeah? In this case, we have to, to uh, divide into two parts. So one part on the left hand side and one on the, on the right hand side. In both parts, every combination is there and not twice. This is the most important thing, it's not twice. So we say this here, this is part number one. Okay, And we say this here. This is part number two. And the basic idea of it is that we do subdivide, that we do subdivide our control, or that we use our pressure lines or our signal lines only in that part where they are useful to us. So basically we have two different pressure lines, signal pressure lines for those two cases. So here we have a pressure line 1 which will be under pressure if we are in this area. And then we have a pressure line 2 which will be under pressure if we are in the other area, in pressure in area number 2. So this here is called P2 and this here is called P1. And of course, we need to have a valve which can switch between the two pressures. Yeah? So we will use here a 5-2-way valve as well as, as the other ones. Yeah? And this 5-2-way valve will either switch here or switch here. So this here will be connected to position to, to line number two, huh? and this here will be connected to line number one. Okay, and the connections are, of course, here's the one line, two, three, four, five, yeah? and the one line will get pressure connection. So with this valve here I can switch between the two lines and since this valve is now switching information, yeah, it's not a QM, it's information handling valve, yeah, fluid technique, it's a KH, yeah, it's a KH1 I call. Yeah. Even it's the same type of valve yeah, because we say it's also pneumatically operated. Yeah. 
with a one four line and with a one two line. Yeah. So you see, it looks pretty much the same. Yeah. But it's probably much smaller. Okay. So if this is the situation in the beginning, if this is the situation in the beginning, uh, the pressure is now on the two line. Yeah? And what needs to be to start this? Well, we would have the, pre the, the valve for the start button, right? This is, needs to be pressured by the two line now. Yeah? So I will draw this in the recording color. Yeah? So there is a 3 2 way valve as well. Yeah? And here the one connector is connected to the pressure line 2. So only if pressure line 2 is under pressure, I can press the start button. Yeah? And this is again my SJ1. Yeah? And what else needs to be fulfilled? Yeah? Well, the last thing which was happening is that MM1 traveled in. So BG1 needs to be operated. Yeah? So this, I will also draw this valve here. One, three, two, yeah. and here we would have the lock position, and this is operated, and this is BG1. Yeah. So it's exactly, it's exactly what we have done before. SJ1 needs to be pressed, and BG1 needs to be inside, and then we switch we are at this position currently yeah and now we're pressing start so we are switching we're switching this signal and suddenly p1 is under pressure okay. since p1 is now getting under pressure what needs what is the first thing which needs to be ha needs to happen uh mm1 needs to travel out so do we have further conditions no we can just Say, whenever M1 is under pressure, we want, you see, M1 is always out or will travel outside. Yeah? So we will simply apply pressure here. So QM1 is switching, this is starting to travel. Okay. What is the second thing which needs to happen? If this is outside, this shall travel. Okay. This is the second thing which needs to happen. So I am now with the blue pressure. So I PG2 will switch here. Yeah? So we'll draw PG2 here. This is BG2. Okay. So this is traveling out. Now we are touching this, and now this starts to travel out. Uh, BG3 we have not yet drawn. Yeah. So what happens if BG4 now is reached? Uh, what is the what shall happen? Well, then we are exactly at this position, and we have to shift or to change the area. So we have to, to switch this one. Yeah? So we will draw this PG4 here. Also powered by pressure line number one. This is BG4. Uh, we are connected here, of course, because we are usually not pressed. Yeah? The two line. 
this will switch to the pressure pressure line 2 and it is powered by pressure line 1. Here you see what is happening. What is actually happening? Yeah. We will get a touch here and will immediately turn ourselves off. Yeah. So this will only be a short yeah. Meanwhile, this has been turned off because this was traveling outside, so this was the air, so this can switch. There's no issue about this. Yeah. So now, pressure 2. The 2 line is under pressure. Yeah. What is the first thing which shall happen in the 2 line? Well, this should go in. Yeah. Since the 1 line is no longer under pressure because it's the air now, like here, yeah, even if BG2 is still operated, there is no pressure anymore. So we can immediately connect to here. Yeah. And we can immediately switch this back. This will travel inside. BG4 is no longer operated. Yeah. This does not really matter because here was no pressure. Yeah. So this will stay that the way. And then BG3 is operated. And BG3 we have not drawn up to now. Because now BG3 shall trigger this going in. Well, there is still room. So we can draw this traveling in. Yeah. And... Of course, BG3 is operated in standstill position. So here is BG3, of course, BG3, yeah. and it's operated and it's coming from this line. Here is 2, here is 3, here is 1, yeah. and this is BG3. Now, this should do exactly, exactly what we would expect. Yeah. Let's see if this is really true, yeah. because we already thought once this is working. Yeah. Let's start in this position. Yeah, B2 is under pressure, here is pressure, here is pressure, okay, here is pressure. These two are pressurized, yeah. here is pressure, is here pressure? No, because P1 is no pressure, the blue lines are without pressure currently, so there is no pressure. Now, uh, this is in, traveled in, this is traveled in, yeah. now I push the button, we will get here, we will switch. Now every brown line is without pressure, no pressure, no pressure. No pressure anymore. This immediately turned off itself. We're switching. P2, uh, P1 is getting now under pressure. Every blue line is under pressure. So here we are switching. The brown line is no longer under pressure. We are switching. Check. Yeah? First position, first movement. Check. Yeah? We turned it off in time. So this is moving. BG1 will switch back. Does not really matter because the brown lines are pressureless right now. Uh, so if it's additional pressureless, it's additional pressureless. Uh, then we will touch PG2. PG2 will then be operated. Blue lines are under pressure. Will be under pressure. Brown lines, no pressure, no issue there. Yeah. We will switch this. This will start to travel. PG3 is unoperated. Uh, so this will switch here. Does not really matter because the brown lines are currently without pressure anyway. So we are just switching, de-airing this also. Yeah? And then we will touch BG4. BG4 will switch this and now the brown lines are again under pressure. Yeah? The blue lines are no longer under pressure. So this will immediately turn itself off and yeah, there is no pressure. There is no pressure because the blue lines are without pressure and the brown lines, well, uh, here we have pressure now. This will immediately start traveling back. Yeah, this is what we expect. Yeah. Once it's traveled in, so BG4 is no longer operated. Well, does not really matter because the blue lines are out of pressure anyway. So we will now be at BG3. BG3 is operated. Brown lines are under pressure. Switch back, travel in. We are at the beginning. This is really working. Cascaded control. All right. 
So we divided our task into two areas and so the signals are only there if, if valid. Yeah? If we not have one pressure line but four pressure lines, for each step one pressure line, yeah? this is called a synchronized chain. Yeah? So then we have to store the information in which step we are in different valves here. Yeah? So and each next step will turn off the previous pressure. Okay. We'll discuss this in, in control in controls. Yeah? Then then this is discussed. So there is a video about this. Yeah, you can watch it or wait until until the playlist reaches this video. Yeah. So that's it about pneumatics, which you will hear right now from my side. There is another playlist about pneumatics. It's about electropneumatics, yeah, electrically controlled pneumatics. Yeah. Next thing I would advise to watch is hydraulics. There we will talk about, well, a pretty similar topic. It's not air, then it's a fluid. And this has some certain impacts on how this is working, how good or bad, and what are the benefits and so on. This is then in, in this series of video about hydraulics. This would be my recommendation for you. Watch this video series, this playlist. For the pneumatics, nothing left to me to say then. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.